everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we should have a fun one on our hands. It's the Broncos coming in at 4-0, going up against the Falcons, who come in at 3-1. With that, we'll send it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. They've got the call in this week five matchup. Okay, Larry, we are located a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building here in downtown Denver. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. It's been all systems go in this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And as Gap folks believe that this is a team that's built to go all the way. You can't win the Super Bowl in September, but they're telling everyone that they're going to be there in the end. Meanwhile, for the visiting Falcons, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. The first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror, and off we go in week five on EA Sports. And you combine a big leg with a mile high air, there's the outcome. This will sail out of the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be let out by a man in his ninth year already out of Boston College. It's Matt Ryan. And there's no way that Matt Ryan is ultimately happy about what happened in 2015. He's low dedicated and looking for a bounce back season. for the first time with Devontae Freeman. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. I know it's a word that we tend to overuse, but Devontae Freeman can be awfully explosive with the ball in his hands. He showed at the beginning of last year. He had 10 touchdowns the first couple months. The Falcons themselves were red hot, and then sort of went down the tubes a little bit toward the end. Yeah, the team's record and its production declined the same way, but I really like his overall game. Freeman again. Oh, a heck of a move. Oh, man. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And the man who helped Florida State to a national title in 2013, Devontae Freeman, reeling off a nice run. I remember when he came out of school and I was evaluating him for the NFL draft. I loved a lot of his game. Run it, catch it, block. But I loved how hard he played. He played every play as if it were his last and that ran him to the Pro Bowl after the 2015 NFL season. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he'll take it down to the 30-yard line. And hang on here. Freeman shaken up. Remaining on the ground after that last play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. 23 yards on the play. When big runs occur, sometimes there's a sense that things were pretty easy, and that one carried them down inside the 10. But getting into the end zone now, that won't be easy at all because you're going to face different defenses and not as much real estate to work with. Will they be able to run it, or will they have to throw it in order to try and score? So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. That's caught at the two. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. See that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. 
Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. Still second down. Justin Hardy, his first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. For the touchdown. Here's Bryant now to kick it away. The return comes now from Jordan Norwood. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick in April's draft out of Memphis University. It's Paxton Lynch. Went through some injury issues in high school and played in a heavy run offense. It was overlooked by a lot of the colleges, but found a home in West Tennessee and made up for lost time in throwing the football. A big, powerful kid. He can really fling it. It's C.J. Anderson, and he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. C.J. Anderson may not be a Pro Bowl runner, but he knows how to run big in big games. Yeah, he sort of sealed the Super Bowl for them in the fourth quarter. Big game against the Patriots last year on a Monday night, but only 720 yards all told in 2015. Fake to Anderson, now it's Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brooks Reed, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Here's Riley Dixon now. Back deep for the Falcons is Eric Weems. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Atlanta now 
coming out on the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Here's the offense, and we talk about the tight end, Jacob Tammet. A lot of people thought of him as simply a safety valve receiver. He can be a primary receiver. Jacob Tammy shows better athleticism than what people expect. Second down now after the incompletion. This is Coleman. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. A couple of Broncos there in on the tackle. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. Von Miller is so good that he doesn't even need a nickname. His ability to bend and dip on the pass rush, unequaled in this league. Seven yards remain now on third down. They will run again with Coleman. And he is going to have the first down as he's up to his own 13-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Oh, now Miller slow and getting up. He's still down on the ground. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. So the false start will back them up five. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. Partial foul. Face mask. Defense. Charles, I know it's hard when live bullets are flying, but you cannot keep your hand up around the face mask area. It is absolutely inexcusable nowadays. We talk about target areas all the time. You have to aim lower so that your hand doesn't get involved in the face mask. He's up to about the 37. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Coleman now. 
right him through. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. But at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Ryan now to throw on third down. He's got Sanu. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up four. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. On fourth down, here's Matt Bosher on the punt. Fielded at the 33. Just a 30-yard punt that time. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They start the drive with Anderson. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. The offense on your screen now, and our first look at C.J. Anderson. And what a look it's going to be, making a name for himself rapidly running the football. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. They'll come out in the pistol. Again, we'll see the pistol here. On second down, Anderson. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. They'll run it. Here's Anderson. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 13 on the pick up there. And it'll be good for a Denver first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? They, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Let's go. Three, nine, Ten. And it's Lynch. And he hits his man on the out route. Demarius Thomas. Give him 11 on the game there. And it'll give the Broncos a first down. Well, we saw the practice film this week. They wanted to focus on these intermediate passing plays, and it paid off there. And they took that focus not just to the practice field, but in the film room to show the guys exactly what they wanted, what types of looks they should expect to get, and how they would beat those coverages each and every time, and it paid off on that play. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. 
But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He, just, and he will score. Touchdown, Denver. Paxton Lynch, his first touchdown on the year. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. That was not a designed run. It was supposed to be a pass, but it turned into an exceptional run. What a scramble for a touchdown. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And the mile high air in full effect as that's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't I turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away. And they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow. Now you got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something Bob's to be gained from it. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. That'll bring up second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Colvin. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed, and that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. the defense dial up the pressure let's see third and 11 on third down Ryan he's got time he's going to flip that out to the flat it's complete and he's able to get up here to the 26 it'll be a pickup of just two and that's going to make it fourth down Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And he'll take it just outside the 40. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Denver getting set to take the field. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit with play action. Jamarius Thomas! And all the way home for a Bronco score! Demarius Thomas, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos able to show off their quick strike ability. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone.
McManus now for the extra point. And he's got it. It's in seven ball game. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And as we see so frequently here in Colorado, that went over the end line. So it'll come out to the 25. And here now come the Falcons. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better props and big and get things going in the excitement area. Getting it out left side to Sanu. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage... Running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive, the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. At the end of one, 14-7 is the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Here's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. They're expecting pass. More. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Now a handoff looking right. A gain of three, second down. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. The Falcons will call on Matt Bryant for the field goal try. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And Bryant's kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense, and over the post. Bryant now, after hitting the field goal, gets set to kick this one away. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. 
And Denver getting set to take the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. And on second and ten now. In the backfield is Anderson. A fake to Anderson. Now it's Lynch. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. And now Lynch. Well, partner, I guess that answers the question about whether they're going to sit on it or not. <laughs> it does. Now we'll see if they try that again. Yeah, I think what we find on plays like that, when you take that shot, if you're unsuccessful, then you go way more conservative to finish the half, you know? I think that's the way they'll go. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 35 yards that time on the punt, and it'll be Falcon football as they take possession. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because they, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. From the shotgun, Ryan. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And coming out now, the Broncos. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Watch left, watch left, watch left. Start with me, 
Lynch looking to throw on second. And that is incomplete. Cody Latimer, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now they brought in an extra defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. A good call. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. They'll throw on first down with Lynch. Sanders has it over the middle. And he's brought down. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So the offense has it first and 10. Thomas, the lone receiver left. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Now Lynch on first down. And it pops. Free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Second and ten. It's Lynch again. Finding time. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. A very solid gain of 27. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Green, 39. Lynch now throwing on third. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And McManus able to put it through. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Challenged the play, it did not pay off. 
and that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Well, partner, the hit sure looks like a simple route, but I think the issue with it is a lot of time when you're making that play, you're actually working your way back inside towards traffic where the big guys are coming from inside out, whether it's defensive ends or linebackers. And a lot of the time, instead of securing the pass, your eyes might stray towards the middle and wonder where the big hit's going to come from. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. To throw is Ryan. He's got Sanu. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On first and ten, it's Ryan. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Second down following the incompletion. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Still nine yards to go on third down. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan surveying the field. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down to Marcus Ware. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And now a high kick trying to pin him back. Taken in at the 11. A very good return that time. 18 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever Second down here after the incomplete pass. Thomas, the lone receiver left. All right, here we go. Blue Second and ten now. It's Lynch. And it's caught over the middle by the tight end green. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Three, 
So here we go, first and ten now. Time running out here on the play clock. Lynch to throw. Lynch fighting. He fumbles. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away. Lynch fighting. He fumbles. He lost the football. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. So the offense able to recover the fumble, but it's third down now. A fake to Anderson, now it's Lynch. Looking for Sanders here on the deep ball. And incomplete, he can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Here's Riley Dixon now, standing just outside his own goal line. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. On first down, Ryan. Getting it on left side to Sanu. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. first down and he comes back with one complete and they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24 never make the mistake that the slot receivers especially the little guys like we're watching here are just quicker than fast a lot of them combine quickness and speed and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there throwing now Ryan on first down that is caught inside the five. And he's brought down after a good game. Give him 22 on that one. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal. 
And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. It's Coleman here. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And that loss of yards there is not just on him. It's on the guys blocking for him. I mean, they're supposed to create some type of space or at least get a stalemate. They end up letting them through and ended up tackling him for a loss. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Ryan on second down. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Justin Hardy with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Falcons are an extra point away from tying the football game. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it. Here's Bryant for the extra point. And he gets it to go, and we're all even. 17 apiece. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. The Falcons set to get things rolling on defense again here. They're just hoping for more of the same last time they forced the punt that led to a score. They flipped the field, essentially, and that's what you want to do as a defense. Make sure that you put your offense in a great position to run their offense right. and put the ball in the end zone. That's exactly what they accomplished. Well, they accomplished that last time. What will they accomplish this go around? All right, here we go. Three, three. Now Lynch on first down. He goes underneath for Anderson. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Call it a gain of three. And it'll be second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play. But if you're on offense, be aware. Ball may come your way. Now it's second and seven. Lynch looking to throw on second. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. So nothing separating these two teams as we head to the break all square. As we send you on to Orlando, we hook back up with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks guys. We'll get back to you soon for the second half of this tied ball game. But first, let's look back now at this first half of play. The Broncos have not been bashful these last two weeks when it comes to throwing the football. The Falcons are finding out firsthand they'll have to deal with this passing attack if they want to win. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Broncos lined up at the five. Lynch is going to look for space, and he counts off the six-play drive with the score. We're brand new at seven. Broncos with the football late in the first. Tight coverage here, but the completion is made. And this will go all the way for a touchdown. Broncos up by a touchdown. Late in the second, Hardy's got the reception, and it's caught for the touchdown. Falcons all tied now at 17. So that'll bring our halftime report to a close. We'll go back now to Sports Authority Field at Mile High for the start of the third quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. 
And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Gotta wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. Left side here to Sanders. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. Throwing here. Lynch on first down. To the sideline. And, oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much game than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? <laughs> yeah, you plays like that, you at least expect the first down there, just one yard. He's got time. And down he goes. The pressure getting to Lynch. No, and after the sack, he's still down on the field. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Big sack on second down. Now the offense needs to convert here on third. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now Paxton Lynch on third and long. On the right side, caught by Green. It'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here comes the Falcons' offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half? He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Demarcus Ware from his outside linebacker spot. He comes up to drop him for a loss of 10. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Second down, here's Ryan. His throw incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Jacob Tammy, there. And it's third down. Good play there to step in and knock that one away by Chris Harris. Who said that he couldn't play in the NFL? Not me. Hey, not you. A lot of scouts did. A lot of people undrafted. And has turned himself into a pro bowl cornerback. One that really knows how to play the position. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. 
but they don't get it. And now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And this will pin him nicely inside the 20 as it's out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Now this Broncos offensive unit ready to head back out onto the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back at the two. Brooks Reed in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part gets a chance to get after the quarterback it's almost like a reverse red zone they can create points using their defense and this time they take their man down and on the outside they're playing press coverage Thomas the lone receiver left now it's Lynch they find some open field here and able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. He's got time. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Here's Riley Dixon now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Taking on the midfield logo. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Falcons are set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. Now the Broncos heading back out onto the field. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of, great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. On first down, Ryan. And his throw is incomplete. Pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. Now a play fake here on first down. 
Sanu with a grab over the middle. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Mohamed Sanu, his second touchdown on the season. And the Falcons have broken our tie. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him. Let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? R-A-C. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. And they will take a seven-point lead now. For the touchdown, here's Bryant now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. First down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. The 30. A huge play there for Denver. 55 yards. And as our graphic shows, sort of back to his old form, yeah, you requested a meeting with a tight end coach this week. What came from that? Yeah, that's not normal because nor we usually talk to the offensive coordinator, defense coordinator. It's pretty simple stuff, but... You're talking about a, a former tight end now coaching who's been to Pro Bowls and understood what it takes to get things done and get them done better. He's had bad games and had to bounce back. So I just asked him, what, what kind of advice did he give him? What do you do with him? He just I told him to relax. He's one of the best in the game. Let's go play. And it's worked out pretty well in this one. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. In the backfield is Anderson. Lynch to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. There you go now. Green. On third down, Lynch. He goes underneath for Anderson. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Demarius Thomas with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where did you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. And that will tie our game here in the third quarter. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Here's Robinson. Oh, look at that. Oh, 
Oh, look at him turn. Yeah, and a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. They begin the drive with Coleman. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner, but where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. And they give this time to the tailback and to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. They come up in an offset eye. Ryan, blitz coming, and down he goes. Shaquille Barrett in there to sack him for a loss of six. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. That draw play got blown up by the blitz of the defense. Ordinarily, that's exactly what you want. You want them to blitz, and they go past you, and you go past them for a big gain. But in this situation, they hit him at the worst possible spot, right exactly where you were running the draw, and he got in there and got him. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. Now it's Ryan. Over the middle that time, the Wings. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So much about this game situations, and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Matt Bosher now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And they'll try to fire up the running game with C.J. Anderson. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid-type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Lynch looking to throw on second. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he's brought down after a good game. 
23 yards on the play. And he is picking up right where he left off a week ago. I wrote down, so funny here on my notes, what he said last week. And after we talked about the good game, he said, I will do it again. And I wrote those words down, <laughs> and he's done it again. And it's not bragging if, you, if you're doing it, right? Because that's exactly what he's told you, and he is getting it done smooth in the secondary, making catches, making plays. That's the guy that we know. From midfield now, here's Lynch. Finding time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. attack on the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. Touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. Here's Eric Weems now on the return. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And the Falcons now making their way back out onto the field. Flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Shotgun, Ryan. They shakes him off. And he can't escape the pressure. Ryan goes down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked.
flat. That's complete to his running back. He lost two there, and it's third down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side, but for lost yarding. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try and run with their fullback. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Here's Matt Bosher now. He's been terrific so far. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Now, this is going to work out well as it's out of bounds near the 13-yard line. Now here's the Falcons' defense getting set to go again. Their secondary, their whole defensive unit really struggling. They've given up three touchdown passes. That last drive was dominant through the air against them. They found something that was working for them on offense, and they just kept going to it, just kept throwing the football. So that means an entire overhaul on the defensive side. They need more pressure on the quarterback and obviously need tighter coverage on the receivers. See if they can get that tighter coverage. On first and ten, it's Lynch. And he gets it complete to Latimer. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll make it second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. On second down, here's Lynch. Buying time to his left. Lynch fighting. He fumbles. He lost the football. And this is going to be brought back. It's a scoop and score for the Falcon TD. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big-time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And that will tie our game here in the third quarter. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will take a knee here. So per the new rules in 2016, this will be brought out to the 25-yard line. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Hey, hey, hey. 
Welcome back now to Denver. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. On first down to the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Just one yard to go here on second down. In the backfield is Anderson. There's Lynch. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Back down, down Here we go. Let's go. They give it to Anderson. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Lynch to throw, and this is incomplete. C.J. Anderson, the intended target. Third down here. My good friend, I'm just going to pose the question to you. Did that look like a pass that he should have thrown? Now, the rookie probably needs to be a little bit more careful in these situations. Yeah, that throw would turn him into a veteran quicker, but not in the way that he wants. He wants to learn his lessons by making good throws, not throws like that. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up a fourth down. And you really can't pin that one on the quarterback, Charles. The O-line, they've got to protect better. And they know it. That's their meal ticket. They want to take care of the big guy behind them. In this case, they let him down. And McManus able to put it through. And that will break our tie and give him a three-point lead. So make some room next to Tom Dempsey on the NFL's all-time field goal distance leaderboard. That's going to go down officially as a 63-yarder. Let's not forget about David Akers, Jason Elam, and Sebastian Janikowski, too. So now Matt Prater is 64. He's got a little bit of company up near the top spot. That was one heck of a kick right there. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. It's a pickup of 19, and it'll give the Falcons a first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And complete on the right side, it's Tammy. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make this a second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Now Ryan on second down. And that'll be incomplete.
third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Throwing again, Ryan. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Derek Wolf in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yep. Run what Put you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it? Touchdowns. Left side here to Sanders. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll make it second down. They come up in an offset eye. Now it's Lynch. On the right side, caught by Green. And he takes it down deep into Atlanta territory. Now Green, well, staying on the ground. Let's hope he's all right. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. On first down, it's Lynch. And his throw's going to be incomplete. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Ten yards still left on second down. In the backfield is Anderson. And the play clock's running down. Again on second and ten, it's Lynch. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Play clock winding down. 
Thomas, the lone receiver, left. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. The last game, offense. Still third down. Nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. Following the penalty, Anderson. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? I feel like the offense thought they might catch the defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And McManus able to put it through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they've gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And you combine a big leg with a mile high air. There's the outcome. This will sail out of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. and 10. It's Ryan. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right? The overall game sheet. But you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, it's such a close game, a very big one. Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. On third down, Ryan. Here as he's taken down to Marcus Ware. In there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. It's fielded at the 45. 31 yards on the punt there. And it'll be a short field for the Broncos as they take over first and 10. So the Broncos coming out now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put her through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe it. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> and on the tackle, Jonathan Babineau. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Here's Lynch to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. Seven yards on the play, and they're going to have a third down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Handoff comes to Anderson. Eight yards there and a first down. 
Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Fresh set of downs here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Thomas, the lone receiver left. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Now Lynch on first down. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Now a run with Anderson. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. And left side here, it's Graham. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. He got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So a big one there is that gives him a little cushion. And you know, here in the fourth quarter, the fact that they were able to bleed some time off the clock and put points on the board, even if it's only three, that could turn out to be the drive that ultimately wins them the game. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And the mile high air in full effect as that's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They'll start out on the ground with Coleman. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan surveying the field. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by the safety, T.J. Ward. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And Denver getting set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker tried on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. The strong running. <laughs> and some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Just a couple on the pick up there, and now it's third down. Like any team, they would have loved to have had more yards on that run, but it looks like they just want to get to the two-minute warning and see what they want to do after that. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. 
And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Oh, it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. They run. Anderson. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So it'll be first down here after the run. Another tote here for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Anderson. The you know, Falcons going to use another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So a ways to go here on third and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. And now with the play clock becoming an issue here, Gary Kubiak is going to single for a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe, and that will give them a 12-point lead. So yet another field goal to end the drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And as we see so frequently here in Colorado, that one over the inline. So it'll come out to the 25. The Broncos defense getting ready to go. They had the interception last time led to a field goal. And kept points off the board against them as well. What a great way to end a drive. Take it away and set your offense up to put points on the board themselves. The only thing would have been better a touchdown. Now they'll be looking to get the stop and lead to that here on the next drive. They go back to the air here after the INT. He's got time in the pocket. And Tammy with it over the middle. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. Now Ryan on second down. He's got time. Getting it out left side to Sanu. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. 
And they're going to speed things up here. Offense needs 11, have to think pass here on third down. Again, Ryan finding time. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. One receiver left, three to the right. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Offense. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. It's Ryan on fourth down. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. And this looks to probably be the final play. Lynch down to a knee, and that should just about do it. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.